how to answer IGCSE questions on methods of production. In five minutes, you're gonna find out what you need to know about job, batch, and flow production, instant evaluation advice, and a solved A-star past paper question. This is just a short extract from the complete interactive IGCSE course. Not only with videos for every single topic, but question guides, past paper solutions, quizzes, and games. You can check out the trial course for free now. Methods of production is a popular question at IGCSE. You could be asked a question about one specific method of production or evaluate a proposed change from one method of production to another. You need to know the features of job, batch and flow production and the benefits and the limitations of each one. Job production is suitable for unique products. It's making a one-off product like a wedding cake, a tailor-made suit or a ship. It allows product customization exactly to the consumer requirements. If a consumer wants love in the name of the couple written on their wedding cake, they can get it. Furthermore, workers are usually more motivated. As every product made is unique, the work is less repetitive and requires higher skill. However, the combination of highly skilled workers and the difficulty in using machines for unique products that's very hard to automate because every product is different means there's going to be higher labor costs as a result. Economies of scale can't be achieved for a one-off product. Production can take a long time compared to other production methods. Flow production in many ways is the exact opposite of job production. Instead of having one unique product, you have thousands or even millions of identical products constantly being produced. Production costs are lower per unit because of this mechanization, automation, and the economies of scale. However, large capital costs are required to set up the machinery in the production line. Workers often become demotivated because of the repetitive nature of the work, and there is little flexibility. If a business wants to produce a new product, it means the whole production line must be changed. Batch production is somewhere between flow and job production, and offers a balance of the limitations and benefits of each. A number of identical products or batches are produced before moving on to another batch. Unit costs are lower than job production and it allows some economies of scale. Batch gives greater flexibility than flow production and allows the business to switch between different product lines. Storage costs are also higher as the business must keep goods made in one batch until they have been sold. Students often recommend production methods on the basis of worker motivation or demotivation. For example, making a decision not to switch to flow production because of the impact on worker motivation. However, increasing sales and profit margins is a much higher priority than worker motivation for business owners and leaders. Choosing the most suitable method of production has strong links with mass and niche marketing. Flow production is most suitable for mass market products, but the high capital investment won't make sense for niche markets where those sales are lower. Businesses must also consider the type of good they are selling. Will there be significant cost savings by switching methods of production? Will they lose customers by offering less variety in their product range or offering unique products? Or will they gain more customers by offering mass produced goods at lower prices. Can they maintain their brand image as a niche producer of high quality goods if a business starts mass producing goods? Here we have an example on methods of production, a popular question in paper one. We are asked to focus on batch production at a juice company. We start with our first knowledge point, a range of products can be made, and we include an explanation. So we're able to change product easily to meet changes in customer demand. 
and apply to the case study for the different food flavors. For the second way, we use another relevant knowledge point, can use specialist skills, and we include an explanation with relevant information from the case study. And that's it. Remember to make sure you have two clear distinct points with different application points in each to make sure you don't repeat. Keep your answers short and to the point to keep within your six minute time limit. If you've enjoyed the course, show you care. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe for the weekly videos to drive you to success in business IGCSE and A-level. If you wanna check out a video on IGCSE command words, click over here. And if you wanna find out how to avoid the top five mistakes in IGCSE business studies, click here. And if you really wanna take your learning to the next level, check out the interactive courses and resources to take you to the top in Cambridge business. See you next time.